Good evening, welcome to Close Up. She was a member of the Lysenian Garase led SDL government that was ousted in the military takeover of 2006. Since then, she has been a leading critic and opponent of the Bainimarama government and its policies. Now, she is leading the charge for the Social Democratic Liberal Party into the 2014 elections. We are pleased to have with us this evening this uh, Dalpa Party leader, the Maramambale Naroko Tundriketi Rotemu Mukepa. Thank you for joining me on Close Up. Thank you, Stanley. Now, you have spent the last few weeks and the last few days in particular fending off criticism of Sodalpa as a racist party with racist policies. You're probably fed up of the topic right now. But I am a little bit. But the early. question is, how did you, because you should take some responsibilities, how did you as party leader allow Sodalpa to get stuck in what many see as now this quagmire of racial issues? All right, Stanley. Um First of all, it's the media who will keep highlighting this uh, particular issue, and uh, I suppose it's the term Fijian that you are referring to. Is it? Uh, well, that is one aspect of it, yeah. Uh, can I say that many of the decrees that have come out, especially those impacting the uh, indigenous uh, Fijians, we did not have a say in it. No one was consulted about uh, any of the uh, decrees that, uh, that came out. And uh, suddenly we were told, uh, suddenly we uh, heard that people were on TV saying that I'm glad to be Fijian or we are all Fijians. So for us, uh, for myself uh, included in that, is that we didn't know where, where that came from because we have to understand that the decrees, when they are formulated, um, uh, hardly anybody knows about it until it comes out it and then something out, yes. like you, that you, you, happens. You've made this argument over That's and, right. and I can tell we've gone around in circles a bit in the media around this, but it has become the defining centerpiece mm -hmm. of your campaign so far. You can't seem to get out of it. You are, you are, uh, when Sudalpa turns up to the media organization nowadays, or in any campaign, it's, you're not talking about bread and butter issues. You've, mm -hmm. you've, uh, you're, you're, you're talking and you're actually now on the defensive about these race, alleged racist policies or taking Fiji back into race-based politics of the past? Uh, the, what is a good example is that is your first question asked of me uh, tonight on the uh, indigenous uh, issue. Now, we were, I, I have been highlighting this in the past and uh, reiterating it, that uh, we go back to the, um, to the 1997 constitution where we have the entrenched uh, provisions there uh, in particular for the various uh, groups and in this case here for the uh, indigenous Fijian. And we also have the uh, United Nations uh, Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People and ILO 169 to defend w our position and where we are coming from. Because you've blamed the media but you, you, you can't blame the media for something that you, you, uh, is, you, know, you've, you, you guys brought up in the first place. I mean, Lysin and Garase made those statements I know you said you were not there, but why was it so hard, or why is it so hard for you to just condemn the statement and people could have moved, moved on from that? Because Stanley, I keep on uh, saying that I didn't hear the statement. I haven't heard a, uh, a recording of it, uh, neither have I um, But would you condemn the nature of the comments if it is true? If it were true, I would say that we are all trying to live in peace and harmony here in, uh, in Fiji. And uh, for anyone, uh, including Lysin and Garasi, if there's anyone out there making um, uh, allegations to race or anything uh, in that regard, I would uh, seriously um, uh, disapprove of it because it is not something that will progress us. Because uh, some analysts said that uh, Sodapo was moving well until uh, they said you, um, after you, you, didn't, you, you then became desperate and brought up, went back to the politics of the past. I mean, you launched uh, a, a great uh, attack on Biden Marama when you launched your manifesto. You said you were ready to fight a free and fair election and subject him to a resounding defeat. But now, the feeling, but now the feeling is that Sodelpa has lost his way and you've lost the plot. Uh, I believe that it was one comment that was made by uh, at one of our campaigns that uh, the media have uh, grabbed with both hands and they are running with it and each one of uh, my interviews that comes up and it 
I think it takes up about half the time that uh, we would uh, prefer to be uh, speaking on other issues, more pressing issues. But again, tonight is a good example of uh, right. so, what so, is So happening. let me ask, so this Fijian name thing, is it the centerpiece of your campaign or is it a side issue? I believe it is w one of the issues because people feel very strongly about something that uh, they believed belonged to them, but then suddenly uh, well, we were not even told that this is, you know, this is a national, this has now become a national uh, issue for everyone. Mm. And um, you have been vilified, condemned, uh, ridiculed, uh, in some cases even demonized about this, your stand on indigenous rights. And I've seen you struggle to explain uh, over the last few weeks. And in some of it, you know, my personal opinion, you have not mm -hmm. done so successful enough, but, but that's just me. But despite, uh, but despite that, what makes you, uh, you know, despite all this criticism, stand your ground and not back down. How strongly do you feel about this? I think you're entitled to your opinion as to how we are handling this, uh, Stanley, and everyone is uh, entitled to their own opinion. But this particular issue is very important uh, to, I think, to the 500,000 uh, Fijians that are, that are there because... The indigenous Fijians or...? In indigenous Fijians, there are only 500,000 of us. Uh, and if we are to ensure that the legacy that we have now is passed down to the um, next generations, we have to ensure that what is uh, there, it, what, is what we are entitled to, we uh, safeguard and uh, protect for the, uh, for the next generations. All right, we'll leave it from there. Uh, we'll, leave, we'll leave that topic now. Okay, thank and you. And now we are, we'll go on to, to the campaign uh, two, th two to three weeks away from the elections. Mm -hmm. Are you still confident you will subject Bainimarama and Fiji first to a resounding defeat. You know, Stanley, if you can work a miracle and uh, get the Fiji first party leader to, uh, to a debate, I would be very happy to come on board for that. If the, uh, on, on the campaign now that you've seen, do you still mm -hmm. think that yes. you, will you will subject Bainimarama to a resounding defeat? That, was, that is what we had said from the beginning, and that we still uh, stand by that. Because many of the places you have visited, Bainamarama mm -hmm. has been visiting for the last eight years, uh, and where people have received him and declared their support for him, uh, even within your own province of Rewa and the wider Bono Basara mm -hmm. Confederacy. Uh, have you found that Fiji First has made a strong foothold and gained many supporters, where you know, SDL or the former mm -hmm. Sadal mm has -hmm. used to have sway? I think with the uh, Fiji First, because they were um, in government for the last seven and a half years and with a media decree uh, being one of their um, being one of their strong um, strong arm tactics that uh, they've had there seven and a half years and when you're hearing only one side of the story and uh, you're seeing the developments uh, that are taking place it's very easy for you not to go behind the the media stories, and not to see behind, and not to look behind the heavy machines that are out on the roads, but once our people go out and uh, visit these uh, areas, whether they are rural or urban or peri-urban, they soon find out what is the truth because you can't deny the truth. Once you tell them what the truth is. They, they catch on and they believe it, so, you know. So you think people are, are seeing the truth now? I believe so. All right. We are with uh, the Maramambal and Rokutu Nriketi Rote Mumu Kepa. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. We are with the leader of the Sodalpa party, the Maramambal and Rokutu Nriketi Rote Mumu Kepa. Now, Fiji First has accused Sodelpa of running a negative campaign, mm -hmm. uh, and not uh, looking at the developments and the positive developments that have taken place the last eight years. Instead, you've gone on in spreading fear and dividing the country along, along racial lines. What is your response? The negative bit uh, that they are accusing us of, I, I don't know what negative uh, tea we are coming out with. We are uh, promoting our uh, manifesto. And uh, the other uh, part, about uh, developments, we are very happy with the developments that are, that are taking place. And I think most people, uh, you know, who have eyes to uh, see with, 
they are very happy with the uh, with the developments that are taking place. So you make no argument about that. I have no arguments with the developments, but the other side, when they add that no other government has uh, carried out the developments that we are carrying out now, I um, I would uh, refute that because other governments have uh, carried us uh, forward to where he was when he came on board. The major developments, uh, the electric electricity is uh, is one big one. Uh, Monasavu Dam, that took uh, you know that was a huge development. But uh, the the Monasavu, the roads, the wharfs, the airports, all those are major developments. The Mainimarama government says they are taking Fiji forward to another level. Instead, uh, this is what he says, uh, the uh, Sudalpa is dragging everyone backwards by employing the same old fear-mongering tactics of the old Fiji. I don't know what he's saying about uh, fear-mongering and uh, old Fiji. Uh, our concern in the, with these developments is the um, amount of money that's uh, involved because nobody knows. Uh, we, uh, we, be, uh, we know that there are huge borrowings that have been uh, done. There are loans that have to be repaid. And what we've been asking them, I think, from day one or even be before day one, was, you know, just give us the Auditor General's uh, report. We can have a look at it from 2006, seven, and onwards. And then we can uh, actually look at what the developments are, uh, are on the ground and what's there on paper and how much uh, the generations will have to repay. Yeah, you, you talk about the debt levels. Well, well let's, let's go to that now. The, uh, the government says uh, the debt level is sustainable. You don't agree with it? At 49 percent. I do not agree with it. Just tell him to, to just give us the Auditor General's report. Now, you, you, uh, you said, uh, the, his, this is what he said, the, 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 the sustainable level at 49 percent of GDP. Now, when this government came in 2007, Fiji's debt ratio, GDP, when the SDL government was in power, was around 52 percent. And now it's 49 percent as of December 2013. So the debt level is actually lower now than it was at your time. Do you agree with that? I think they can say anything, uh, Stanley. You know, we can say anything. But when you don't have the documents to there to prove that what you are saying is correct, as stated there, and you know, people, the qualified people have had a look at it, the Auditor General's uh, office, then, then, and only then can we. Um, so you still argue, think argue that point. There is question marks over there. Oh, many question marks. All right. Now I'll, I'll talk about the, the Ngoli Ngoli bill. You said that you'll bring it back. Now, you will recall that that was one of the reasons mm -hmm. that Byron Rama said he had to take over mm -hmm. in 2006. Apart mm -hmm. from the racist policies, mm -hmm. it was the Ngoli Ngoli bill. Mm -hmm. He said these bills will have divided our nation mm -hmm. and will have serious consequences for future generations. So why is Zodelpa raking up these policies of the past that has only divided? Uh, and led fear in this country? You know, the, with the Ngoli Ngoli, uh, we have stated that uh, we will uh, address that issue in Parliament. Now, the Ngoli Ngoli bill uh, that was there in 2006, this new uh, bill will not necessarily be the same bill as that uh, uh, that was uh, tabled in Parliament in 2006. Uh, we are looking at the uh, Ngoli Ngoli as a very important uh, issue because it is, it is the ownership of the Ngoli Ngoli that we uh, yes, are looking now, at. What will be different about this Ngoli Ngoli bill that you're bringing in now? Than from I from think past? time has moved on, and we, uh, we look at, uh, at it uh, uh, you know, seven years or eight years down, uh, down the line. And uh, the, the, if there are any changes that need to, to be made, any amendments uh, made to that, then, then it will be done. Now, in regards to what you're saying about one of the reasons that uh, when he was commander, uh, carried out the coup, I believe that he was wrongly informed uh, at that time. And then we hear that, uh, oh yes, the, uh, the military was, uh, was involved in this. I believe that it was one man who was wrongly advised about uh, the Ngoli Ngoli issues uh, by uh, vested interested uh, people. And I believe uh, that that was the case. And uh, you know, if he's properly informed, he will uh, appreciate more just what the Golim Goli issue is in terms of the indigenous Fijians and why we need to. So, but to you ensure. will look at getting something different when you, if, um, you, if you do come into power. I'm not saying that, uh, Stanley. I'm saying that if there needs to be any amendment 
or any changes that uh, need to be made to it, we will look at it. Because I mean, a lot of the fear from a lot of people is the same thing like the elections win in 2006, that instead of uniting the country, you will go around the same circle again and bring in the policies that divides the country. That, uh, that particular issue on the Golingoli, if we do not resolve it, it will not, it will not go away. It will not there. go away of by itself, regardless of what kind of legis uh, legislation any government brings in, it will not go away unless it is resolved. All right, so I'll come to the con 2000 consti 2013 Constitution. You've mm -hmm. said that it's um, an imposition of the Bainimarama government. That is correct. And you, you intend to either make amendments or remove mm -hmm. it. So what exactly will you change? Uh, first of all, uh, Stanley, we have to understand where that uh, constitution came from. It, it did not come from the people, although they are saying it's the, uh, it's, uh, it's the people's constitution. Uh, we made submissions to the Guy, um, to the Guy Commission, and I believe over 7,000 uh, submissions were made. Uh, they traveled all over the country. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west, they went up to the mountains and down to the valleys. Now, that was a uh, draft constitution that many people could identify with because they had made the submissions to it and they could see it reflected in the, in the draft. Yes, so, so this particular one, hardly anything that we want included is in there. So f as, we, as far as we are concerned, it is an imposition on the people, so we cannot take ownership of it. It may be an imposition, but uh, people say it's one of the best constitutions. It has removed the uh, racial, uh, race-based politics uh, or provisions and things. And, uh, you know, it's, Panamarama said it's about moving Fiji, Fiji forward. So what exactly will you change? It depends on how he wants to move uh, Fiji forward. If he wants to move Fiji forward with this type of constitution that hardly anyone takes ownership of, it is going to be very, very difficult. You asked which uh, particular area we were concerned about. Uh, one uh, area that he, uh, he keeps on waving this uh, constitution around wherever he goes, and lately more waving. Now the particular area that uh, he keeps uh, talking about is equal uh, citizenry. Uh, I think that is very good, uh, you know, the way he is uh, saying, you know, equal citizenry for everyone. But when you look in depth into the constitution itself, there's no equal uh, citizenry in certain areas. I'll just pick on one. Very can I? We're about to go to the break. Very can busy. I? Yeah. Uh, this is on the uh, question of, of immunity. That's in chapter 10. And it's a whole uh, area here on, uh, on immunity, 11. OK, will you take away the immunity provisions if you come into power? Well, this immunity does not give equal citizenry to everyone. Will you take away the immunity provisions for those that undertook the 2006 coup? If you we will have power? to relook at, uh, at all the, at the whole constitution, in particular, some of the areas like the immunity. Because we've been told to go to break, but I'll, I'll touch on this topic. You have uh, called for reconciliation between the military and the people in the Vanuatu. That is correct. So uh, will you keep that immunity provisions or will you take it away? Is that part, could that be part of the moving forward? Part of the moving forward is to look at the whole uh, constitution and see what works for everybody. We want equality for everyone. So in this particular case, it is very difficult to have equality for the people who have died, for the people who have been persecuted, for the people who have had their property, they've lost their jobs, they've lost, you know, almost everything. They, when you ask them, is this equal citizenry, they just shake their heads. But you have a way to move Fiji forward? We have. All right. We're with uh, Rote Mumukapa, the um, Ramambala Rokhtun Riketi, leader of the Sadalpa Party. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Close Up. Now, mm -hmm. when, we, when we went to the break, I yes. asked you if you had a plan or a way mm -hmm. to move Fiji forward. You said you did. How do you intend to move Fiji forward? Can I just go back, uh, uh, Stan, to, to the question on, uh, on the Golgoli, where you had asked, and I said it was, the military, it was the military commander at that time who picked it up. It wasn't the military. And can I say here that one, uh, one area that we need to be uh, mindful of is that the military take orders. Uh, when you're uh, subordinate to those above you, you have to take uh, orders from that. So we have to be mindful 
that it's not the whole uh, uh, whole of the military, it's the leadership Do you uh, have position. a plan to move Fiji Yes, forward? we have a plan uh, for that and it's contained in our manifesto. So all the areas that we want to move Fiji forward are uh, all there in the manifesto. And uh, you, 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 you are to, you're calling for this reconciliation between the people and the military? I think it is very important, not only uh, between the people and the military, but it's between peoples uh, themselves, not necessarily involving the military, because there are whole uh, communities that have been affected in one way or another. And we go back to the, to the cause of, uh, you know, the past cause, uh, right to 1987. I've been asked uh, question, uh, questions as to how, how can we get rid of this coup culture? Because that did you is, support, is, for instance, the 87 and the 2000 coups? 1987, Coup, I did not, I have not uh, supported any of the coups because it is coup? not right. I lived right next door to where the 2000 coup took place. So I really cannot uh, say that I would, uh, that I support it because I could see the people that were affected by those coups and are still affected uh, to this day. But you were involved somehow, there were pictures of you. What, what role did you play then? We were part of the uh, committee, Great Council of Chiefs that tried to bring about some form of reconciliation. Uh, other than that, that was my role. So your stand now is you condemn all coups? My stand has always been from the past, present, and into the future. I do not support any coup. All right, let's now go to bread and butter issues. Okay. Uh, how does Sadelpa aim to grow the Fiji economy and create employment? All right, right now, uh, right now the poverty levels are very high. Uh, we are, you know, we, we have been uh, told from the figures that it is somewhere between 46, 47, 48 percent of uh, poverty in the country. Uh, which figures are you basing this on? This is from The Economists. Okay. Pro yeah. Do I have to, I, I don't have to name them, eh? These, these are... You might have to, but... <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't want to, but you know, these are people who are writing into the papers. Because people want to know, are you basing your, your figures yeah. on facts? Because, I mean, some will it, argue, it how can Rotimu make a difference and do better when she was part of a government? It has to. That it from comes two, from, from 2001 to 2006, poverty also rose under the, the SDL government. That's, that's documented. All right. This is from Professor Wadnasi's okay. uh, uh, writings, right. that the uh, poverty levels are, are very high. And uh, we are concerned about that because even without those figures, you can see the uh, levels of poverty here in Suva, where there are more people on the verandas, um, uh, you know, uh, asking for money. And uh, I'm now to everybody in uh, outside of MHCC, where people are, you know, just trying to put food in their stomach for for the day. So we look at growing the economy in terms of. Uh, cost of living, because that shows what the economy is like, and un unemployment. So one of the uh, big ones that we're looking at is the 50 million subsidy that we have uh, said we'll provide for VAT-free uh, items. For uh, VAT relief. VAT relief. And also we need to look at uh, employment. Uh, once the um, uh, democracy is uh, back in, we should uh, be able to attract some, uh, uh, some investments. And we also look at the priority to, to provide employment for those who are not, uh, not employed. Uh, big area is the small and micro uh, enterprises. Will you also invest in infrastructure as this government has done? I think we would have to look at uh, what will alleviate, uh, and, uh, alleviate poverty right away because of the levels uh, that we have there. And into infrastructure, I think we have uh, also to look at that, uh, that area. All right. I wanted to, to get this because uh, Sodelpa had accused Bain Marama and I had said Kayum about their income, salary, and assets that has not been, they believe, has not been properly um, uh, declared. That, that is correct. And, uh, but they, but they, they've also turned their attack on you uh, because you, you submitted that there was only $1,000 in, in, in your bank account. And this is what I had said Kayum said when he declared the bank assets, he says, we also hope that the Registrar of Political Parties and the media ask about the leader of Sodelpa who declared that she does not have any income. How does she survive? How can a leader declare that she has no income? Unquote. I don't know where he's getting his uh, information from uh, Stanley because I declared on that paper that was submitted to, to their office is that I'm getting a pension 
the pension is my own parliamentary pension and that of my husband and that was submitted to, to them. If I had only $1,000 in my bank account at that time, it was because they had cut off my uh, pension. So how can I, how can I um, say that I have more than $1,000 when they were cutting off my pension? So you say you've declared, but they have not declared correctly? They have not declared correctly. So we are all looking forward you're, to you're, them. You're basing that on what document? Just on, L, on uh, what you, we've heard somewhere, or you, you have some documents to prove? We know. We know. We have some, seen some documents, which I cannot say right now, on, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, they are going around. They are very rich people. So $1,000, they deprived me of my pension, and they themselves are reaping. So we are looking forward to what they have been reaping to be shown to us. All right, we, we, time is uh, coming to a close for, for the both of us. Now looking ahead to September 17th, where do you see the support for Sodalpa coming from? Because the electoral system has been designed to try to remove ethnic voting or racial voting. Do you still see, do you think that will happen? What we are uh, looking forward to, because of the observers that, uh, that will be here, we hope that it will be free and fair, that the elections uh, will be that, and there will not be any rigging. You know, we can keep on hearing rumors that you can rig this uh, particular election. So we hope with those uh, multinationals that are here that they will ensure that there is no rigging on anybody's part. And for Sodelpa support, I just want to thank the people that have been out there supporting us, not only in the rural areas where we have a you know, big, uh, big support base, but also from the urban and peri-urban uh, areas and those that are overseas who have been declaring to us that they support us. So we thank them all and we thank them also for the many prayers that they have been offering, not only for Sadelpa, but also for our country. Brother Mumkapa, thank you for joining me. Nawalebo Stanley. Naka. That was the show for the evening. Uh, we'd like to hear your feedback on the show, so do take part in our weekly poll. I know the Maramambal Narok Nukedi has posed the challenge, but the question still is, which two political party leaders would you like to see on a face-off on close-up? Simply text your answers to 3562 for uh, all Vodafone, Digicel and Ink users, and results will be announced early next month. Thank you for joining me on close-up. Good evening.